Hey, hello, good morning, guys, and this is Coding with Goto. And today we will be doing the loops practice and the loops make. So, without any further ado, let us dive in. So, this program pins the numbers 0 to 9 to the console. Run the program and see how it works. The speed slider has been made to run more slowly so you can watch how it works. Edit the program to print the number 0 to 99. You can turn the speed slider all the way up. So, First, let's understand two things here. One, this is the speed slider. So basically how fast the output will come. So if you put it like really slow, you can see that the outputs don't come as fast. So then it does everything by hand. But if you do it faster, you can see you get it. Yeah, Nixon. Nixon that, that just executes the whole program. So as you can see, we have printed the number 0 to 99. How do we do that? So first we create this counter variable, we start to 0. And then while the counter is less, less than 100, you print out the counter, and then you do counter plus 1 every single time. And this keeps increasing the counter value. Then, you can write counter plus plus instead of counter, plus, counter equals counter plus 1. This can help because since reiterating the counter variable, you just increment it. And this is more simple. So the program prints the word hello to the console 10 times. So as you can see, you have the counter and then console log hello and it's going to do counter plus plus. So instead of, in so instead of doing counter equals counter plus one, instead of, instead of reinstating the variable each time we go to the loop, we just increase the value by one. So let's run it again. And let's speed this up. You can see we got the word hello about 100 times. Done. Let's finish and go on to number three. On number three, so this program simulates flipping 10 coins. On each loop, it appends another random zero one to the list. You need to add code simulating rolling 10 dice. So here we have the coin flips. Let me just delete all this code. Okay, so first let's understand. So we have the counter and next we have the empty ar uh, array slash list of coin flips. So while the counter is less than 10, you append the item of coin flips, which is either a random number zero or one. And then you do counter plus plus. So then say so here's random 10 random coin flips and then you do console log. So since this is almost basically what we're doing, I'm just gonna take all that code, do it down here. Okay, so. Now, the counter equals zero instead of coin flips, let's just create the thing called dice rolls. While well, counter less than equal 10. Okay, so append count dice rolls. Dice rolls by a random number of zero through six. And then we increase the counter. So then we say here's 10 random dice rolls. Then we say this is 10 random dice rolls. Then when you click run, you can see that it fastly executes the code. And then this happens. Oh, so you can see that the array name is not dice flips, rather it's dice rolls. So now to fix this error, all we have to do is just change the array name, which is dice rolls. So let's hit run and let me just, all right, so, oh, I'm trolling. All right, let's run it back one more time. Oh, well, sorry guys. Okay, so now we finally have it done. So you can see that there's 10 random dice rolls. All we did was we had to change the change the list we were appending to the numbers because the dice has 0 to 6 the counter and the output so now that we cross applied our knowledge let's go on to the next one so I will be doing the looking for doubles one so let us dive in so 
complete this program that runs a simulation of rolling a dice of pair horn hundred times and keeps track of how often doubles were rolled. After the simulation, the program should tell the user how many doubles were rolled. For example, the no number of doubles rolled out in a hundred rolls, 19. Before the loop, create a variable to keep track of the number of doubles that are rolled. At the start of the loop, update the conditional statement while st for the while loop so there are 100 simulated rolls. Inside the loop, add a code to check that see if doubles were rolled and updated the variable tracking of the number of doubles if doubles are rolled. After the loop, you update console log to include the number of doubles rolled. So, let's see here. So we have the counter, we have roll 1, roll 2, and then we have doubles. So, well, counter is less than 101. Remember, if it's less than, it doesn't include the ending variable. So if you want to do it 100 times, we do 101. So then we have the roll one, which is random number, roll two, which is a random number, and then you check doubles. Okay, so you do counter plus plus to make sure the counter keeps updating. And then on doubles, you just have to check that, oh, if, if roll one is equal to roll two, this means that a double was rolled, you just increase doubles. And then you do console log, the number of doubles rolled out by in 100 rolls total is 19 again. Let's reset one, 16, 17, 15, 21, 19, 16. As you can see, it's pretty probable. Then, this is pretty simple a concept. I think you guys are catching on. So, now let's go for looking for doubles again. Okay, so in this program, okay, before the loop, uh, we just did this. We just did this. Okay, my bad. So in JavaScript for a for loop is a shorter way of writing a while loop. You'll recognize it has the same three parts. So now we're diving into for loops. So you create a variable and assign it a starting value. So it checks the value every time through the loop and then it checks the value of the variable. So Instead of doing while and doing counter plus plus, we create this placeholder variable called i. So i equals 0, and while i is less than 100, you increment. And then you do console log dot i, and you guess what, what happens when you run? You get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And instead of just doing counter plus plus and creating a counter variable, our counter in this place is i, and then the flow loop is just a simpler variation of the while loop. Then, you can also count up by 2 if you want. So you can see that instead of doing i++, you can do you can count by 2s. Because now instead of just doing i++, which is by 1, you do i equals i plus 2, which does 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and so on. So, you can use four loops for multiple things. This program creates two lists of 10 random coins. So you have three variables of flips. Use a for loop to fill the list. So every time so every time you have the i so every t okay so while i is less than 10 it keeps iterating so this loop will basically iterate nine times and so then you add nine different flips so then you run so you have first one this array heads heads tails 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 heads heads same thing over here and then same thing over here so, it's just a pretty neat way to have a counter and run a loop specific amount of times. So, com let's combine the i iterator variable, for example, label plus i in the program below, and you can change this. So, this is why it's really good. So, you can see that we have label 0, label 1, label 2, and label 3. Instead of going through every single one, we and just say it label 0, te increase text color, la label 1, increase text color. Label 2, increase text color. Label 3, increase text color. Text color. Rather than doing that, we will just use the variable, which again will count through 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then just concatenate it with the label. So now, you will set property label 0, 0. Then when you loop again, label 1, 1, label 2, 2, label 3, 3. And this helps overall. Because now, you don't have to have lots of lines of code, it just makes your code simpler. And so it just changes to a random number and a random font size. So you can see this is pretty neat. A for loop is a pretty neat loop. 
So by combining the I now write dice. Okay, so now we have to write our own code. So let's run this. Okay, roll these dice. So it just rolls lots of dice. Okay, let's see what we have here. So on event, we click the roll button. You have the odds and the evens. So every time, so what for every, so since we have 20 dices, we do I less than 21, we increment, then we do the roll, and then we just set set property. So you can see again in the design, dice zero, dice one, dice two, dice three, same thing. So that's why you just use the same I value to do that. And if roll is equal one, three, or five, it's odd. If it's two, four, or six, it's evens. And then you just change the information label. So. Dice 20. Oh, it's only dice 0 through 19. So we just do that. As you can see, it's pretty neat. It's working fine. And that's how we finish. So this is the loops practice. So let's see how this works. So the repeat until similar to while loop, let's just go down here. So what will be displayed after this code segment is run? So count equals zero, and you keep repeating until count three. So then you do count zero. So you just do and one, and, and zero, one and one, and two, and three. So if we go up, and one, and two, and three. So why is it not zero one and two because you can see that we already increased the count to one before starting so we can do one and one it's two and two three and three and it's count three so the loop terminates so it's one and two and three pretty simple then let's do this so what we display as code is run so a equals zero and you repeat eight times so a plus plus one so that means you have one you display it then you add two then it's three then you add two more then it's five so it's one three and five so guys this is it this is the loops practice lesson seven in unit six thank guys for watching don't forget to share like and subscribe this is connie with Gotham, and i'll see you next time have a great day